Hello and welcome to part 3 of my series where I'm trying to write a Pong clone in the Bevy game engine. Last time we got a rotated ball. Let's just check real quick. Yeah, the, the window is resizable so we, we're gonna have to find out how to properly work with the coordinates, I guess. But let's deal with that later on. And we haven't committed our changes yet, but I'm going to... Yeah, maybe I'll leave the tra the rotation there. It's, it's, it's fine, it's fine. So let's just commit what we've done last time. At some po point I'm gonna put it up on GitHub, I guess. Just haven't come around to doing that yet. So, um... Add translation and rotation to the ball. You can't see uh, the commit message right now because it's behind my face, but hey, it still works. So one thing I got curious about is, I mean, this this is not nice. We, we, we spawn the ball by passing a mutable reference to the commands. Is there a better way? Like, can we use the spawn command differently? In this case, by, for example, implementing bundle. Let's take a look. Or let's, let's first take a look at the spawn method. Command spawn. And indeed it takes a dynamic bundle. Although I cannot click on it here, so I'll, ha I'll have to search for it separately. And I guess it's just a box of a box of din bundle. Let's let's take a look. Dynamic bundle from bevy hex. H e c s. Not hex. I wouldn't call it hex. Docs R S bevy h e c s. Here it is. A dynamically typed collection of components. It's a trait. And what does it have? What methods does it have? I mean, the, the trait is empty, it's just a marker trait. So. How? Let's just reload these tabs real quick. Don't need that anymore. So let's take a look at what spawn actually does. Spawn as entity, entity new components spawn as entity we're locking the commands and on the locked commands we spawn as entity Commands internal is, is probably it. So we set the current entity to some, to our entity, and we push. Just push the stuff. So we. I don't get it. What do we get at the components of the dynamic bundle? Let's take a um, look at the width implementation. Um, 
spawn, spawn. So what is a bundle? A collection of components. Well, let, let's just not deal with that for now. I, I mean, I could probably make a bundle to define our ball or something like that. But for now, let's just not do that. Also, the, the method is called in, is, is incorrect. I mean, we need to spawn the camera components before we spawn the bond. So let's just pull this out real quick. Commands that spawn camera 2D components default, and then we're gonna spawn our ball. Yeah. We we can take a look at the um, bundle if it implements dynamic bundle. And it doesn't. Interesting. So I guess the next step, let's, let's just confirm that it still works. Um, but the next step would be to get it moving in some fashion. actually compiling should it take that long oh yeah okay it still works pull out camera spawning from the from spawn ball okay let's go back to the examples and look at the breakout example again the ball seems to have a velocity which makes a lot of sense a interestingly it's a three-dimensional velocity which makes less sense I guess Oh, normalize probably normalizes it, normalizes it to length one. Interesting. So vector ar arithmetic. But what I'm interested in is how how do they work with the ball? How is it? Oh, ball movement system. We can just query for the ball and its corresponding translation component. So it automatically queries the combination of of components that have a ball and a translation. So I, I was wondering how we can access different components of the ball, but essentially that's that's how it works. So let's just create a ball and I mean they why why do they use a three dimensional velocity again? Oh, because it's ma it makes the math the maths much more easier. Much more easy. Not good at English today. So the translation has a vec3 inside I mean we we already noticed that right here the X Y and Z so essentially they're just doing it out of convenience but I guess let's let's make it more correct or like correct and only use a two-dimensional velocity for our ball. 
there there was a vec three a uh, vec vec two data type or struct. So struct ball has a velocity which is a velocity of vec two. Yeah, it's just a vec two, and then we're just going to derive. Uh, implement um, default, not derive default for the ball and add a default velocity to it. No, not introduce local variable. I want I want to do something different. Come on. Actually, we don't need to make it public because, uh, but it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to tell my IDE to auto complete this, but apparently it cannot. Maybe if I call it ball. Nope. So velocity it is. Vec2. We're just going to do the same trick that they've been doing with the normalization. We have a vec2 of, maybe let's just go diagonally, like 50-50. So let's say 1.0, 1.0, normalize it, so it's 1. Let's just check that normalize actually does what we think it's doing. Where is it? Here it is. Return self normalized to length 1.0. For valid results, self must not be of length, length 0. Makes sense. You can't normalize anything that is 0. So, after that, it should be the square root of. Or should it? Whatever. So. We have a 45 degree angled velocity and let's, yeah, let's just use the same that they've been using 400. Need to be f that. Let's let's take a look at the traits that are implemented. Multiply with vec two and with f thirty two, so it's correct. You can multiply it like that. So yeah, let's make a ball movement system. So we want to access the time resource. And we want to query. Do we actually need to query it? I think we don't need to query it actually. We can just assume there's only one ball. Or anyways, even if there are more than one ball, we, we can just use the ball like this, like ball and translation. And access it like this, like mutable reference to ball and no, not mute. Oh yeah, actually we need a mutable reference to the ball. Actually we do not. And we, we need, but we need a mutable reference to the translation. Well, later on, we're, we're going to want to mutate the velocity as well if it collides, but that's probably not done in the movement system, but in the collision system or something like that. So I think it's okay to do it like that right now. So. 
Let's get the delta time. Actually, it's a time delta, not a delta time. Time dot delta seconds, I guess. And then the translation. Now, now it gets interesting. The translation equals the ball's velocity. How do you, do we now? And, oh, we can create a vec3 out of a vec2 by calling extend. So we can say velocity extend 0 because we have a 0 velocity in the z direction and just multiply it with the existing translation. Let's take a look at the translation again. Okay, yeah, we, we probably just have to access the, the internals. That should be it. We're taking the translation and actually not multiplying but adding the time delta multiplied with the ball velocity extended to three dimensions that should be it and now we just have to register the system ball movement system and convert to a system like a dynamic system What's the problem here? Yeah, probably that was the problem. We, we need to take the reference to the tuple, not a tuple of references. But in that case, the translation has to be mutable. Oh, actually, the entire reference here needs to be mutable. Otherwise, we can't mutate anything. Wait a minute. OK, so the binding needs to be mutable. Still doesn't work. Let's go back to the tutorial and take a look at their example again. Oh, we can just. We, we don't need to use this, we can just use separate parameters. That might work. And it's much easier anyways. And it doesn't work. Let's take another look. We have our resources. We have our references. Do we actually need to use queries to mutate it? Let's just try not mutating the translation. 
and check if it can be converted into a system and apparently it can. So it, it seems like we do need a a query or something else <clears throat> to be able to mutate it. Let's take at the uh, take a look at the ECS examples. Not like that, like ECS, ECS event, ECS guide. Let's take a look at ECS guide. So this is a resource, not what we're interested uh, interested in. A query. Query. Also a resource. Uh, that's the startup system. <coughs> hmm. Sometimes systems need their own unique local state. Maybe ECS provides local resources for this case. Oh, it's just about the state here. In that case, let's just do it like they were doing it in the breakout example and use a query instead of the for each system, or what was the name, the for each query. Query of ball and mutable reference to translation. that and of course we need to write the the ball type correctly wrong number of argument oh now it's correct so we have our delta time then we take the query for ball and translation in Query dot iter was it like that? Is not an iterator. Let's take another look. Mutable query with a m immutable reference to ball and mutable reference to translation. Oh, we need to mutably borrow the um, the iterator. Do we? Why do we need to mutably borrow the iterator? I don't quite get it. I don't quite get it. Oh, query iter creates a query borrow. That doesn't make any sense. Let's let's take another look at what a query actually does. We have a query, and we call the iter method, and what we get is a query borrow. Which is what? That's not what I expected to find. Where is it coming from?
Here it is. Not quite sure, but um, them using a phantom data here seems like it's doing something involving unsafe code. It, yeah. Exactly. Uh, let's just do what, what they're doing in their example. I don't quite get why they why this happens like that. Probably because you cannot mutably borrow in the iter method because you would lose the um, like the lifetime would end before you actually return the mutable reference. So we need to keep it alive for this for loop <coughs> by doing the mutable borrow here and query dot iter the query borrow still keeps a keeps alive um, during the entire loop. But now it should work. Or not. What's the, what's actually the problem? Take another look. Time is a time. Oh, we need to. We we must not borrow the resource. Maybe doing it like that will enable the other style. Oh, it doesn't move. Sad. But let's just um, use the old style of the for each system. We have our ball. We have a mutable translation. This should work. At least it should compile. But it doesn't. Whatever. But why is it not moving? just check if this method gets executed it does So the translation should be updated. But we probably still need something else. We have a scoreboard, startup system, pedal movement system, ball collision system. Is it actually changing anything? Let's just take a look at the translation and how it changes. I hope it can be printed out.
Oh, of course it doesn't work. We forgot to spawn the ball. Uh, spawn the ball. We, in in the the spawn ball function, we only spawned the sprite components of the ball, but we also need to add. And let's just fix this indentation, hopefully for good. With a default ball. Now it should work. Let's just disable the printing for now. And it moves. Let's maybe reset the translation to the default one. Just the, the initial translation. Yay, it moves. So, success, I guess. At least for, for that part. Let's just re reduce the default velocity to 100. <laughs> I mean, we, we could now add a paddle, actually. Add ball movement. So, a paddle has some dimensions, but these are stored in the sprite component. A paddle also it do does it need a position? It doesn't because the sprite has a position. <coughs> I mean, for now, let's just make an empty pedal struct. Like this, and like that. No, like this. And we create a new method, and let's call it uh, spawn paddle. I was tempted to add um, left or right, like left player or right player, to the pedal struct, but I guess which player it is should be a separate component and not part of the pedal itself. It's just a component that is added after the fact. So the size, like the dimensions are. A vec tool. Let's hope that it can be const constructed. Otherwise, we're just doing it differently. Let's say it's 50 wide and. or maybe less, like 20 times 200. Whatever. You can fix it later. Okay, and this is apparently not const, which it could be. No, that's the ECS. Um, I mean, all the constructor does it's just assigning stuff. <laughs> Not sure why this is declared as inline. I mean, the compiler would almost always inline this. <clears throat> it's part of 
a separate crate, the glam crate. And it has a newer, one newer version. Um, let's take a look at the documentation, if I can find the link. Oh, here it is. No, it's not const. Support for const types. You don't need to make everything const, I guess, just the constructors, maybe. Eight days ago, so let's just subscribe to this issue and mm, stop looking at it. We can also take a look at if something happens um, with our pull request. can't find it anymore. Maybe, maybe it was already closed. Oh, already merged. So it's fixed now. Maybe the, the, the other issue is already... Oh, nice. I like that. Oh, they, they are going to probably actually fix it so you can run it from any directory by looking at the cargo manifest there, um, environment variable. Very nice. I like how fast they are responding and how they're not just sloppily fixing it, but actually engineering a solution. Very impressed. So where were we? We cannot make a constant dimensions. So maybe it doesn't make sense to do it like that. We. Maybe we just want to spawn it directly. So commands dot spawn. Let's spawn our paddle. Yeah, maybe add, uh, let's add a different component like um, start position so we spawn sprite components with a sprite the sprite has the, this vector as its size Then we don't need a rotation, but we need a translation. And we're doing that by, oh my God. I want 
I want to add missing fields only for the translation, not for the entire thing. Oh, yeah, it's because of that. We take the start position and extend it with zero. Not sure what I'm doing on my keyboard right now. And with a paddle. Oh, and we forgot to add the remaining defaults. And now we can just spawn paddles. Let's first, um, yeah, mutable borrow of commands and the third position is a vec2 new with like minus 300.0, 0 .0, and the second one is plus 300 let's say and this should provide us with two paddles Yay. And actually the dimensions I chose happen to fit quite well accidentally or incidentally. So at paddles. So next is probably to use input to move at least one of the paddles but before that we probably need to define which paddle belongs to which player so let's add a player component left and right and when spawning a paddle we need to add the information if it's the left or the right player Well, let's let's add the start position here. Input player fn start position and it needs a mute uh, an immutable reference to self. We match on self and in case of So let's say the X position is in case of left minus 300 dot zero and in, in case of right 300 and we return a vec2 new of x position and 0, 0 0.0 doing that we can now remove this replace it with player left move that Re replace it with player right this is not a start position anymore but a player and the start position is player dot start position dot extend okay Nice. And player component.
So now, when we make a movement system, we can choose which keys to use based on which player we, we're using. So let's go back to the keyboard input example. Okay, so we we could use the the like the polling method of taking a look at if the key is pressed every single frame, or we could use an event system. But I think in our case, because it we we work with continuous movement, we don't really care how how many times uh, the button was pressed. We only care about if we want to move or not. So. Let's just use this example. And probably the arrow keys, I guess. Keyboard input system. We need a paddle movement system. Paddle movement system. It has a keyboard input which is a resource of keyboard, how is it called, keyboard input. We have a query of not a ball, but a paddle, which player it is. So we, Paddle doesn't contain any data, but we need this to select that we are actually querying paddles. And a mutable translation, like that. Let's just make sure it's, it still compiles. And after that, try adding the system already. Add system, paddle movement system, that system. Check it that it still works. And it does. I mean, it cannot find the keyboard input resource right now uh, or something like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But that's not, not a problem, or is it? Why doesn't it find the keyboard input system? Resource does not exist. Keyboard input. We added the default plugins, which... adds the input plugin. Well... Oh, because we need to use the input of key code. Let's take another look. Not glam, but bevy. Let's just close some of these. input a pressable input of type t interesting oh it has press pressed release just pressed just released on and update what does update do whatever They aren't calling update, are they? No, they're not. I guess the just pressed and just released are like um, edge detection. And update is just called in on every fr frame so that just pressed and just released have correct values. 
whereas pressed and released are just the current state. And key code. Actually, I'm, I'd like to know which types can actually be put in here. Essentially, any type can be great. <clears throat> P code. Interesting. Page up. Up. For now, we, we need up and down, I guess. So let's use an input of key code this time, and it should not explode. And it does not explode. I think I'm, I'm uh, yesterday I, I watched a talk about if considered harmful and I'm currently just thinking about how to avoid it, it should be this one no it's not this one it's a talk by Jules May if if con considered harmful uh, I really recommend you watch it but essentially the the biggest anti pattern according to this talk is multiple ifs with the same check in it so essentially we need to avoid checking if we have the left or the right player in our paddle movement system. So what we could do is we can define the keys, the, the, the movement keys in the player itself. So we only check it here. So we have up and down in this case. We, we could make a better um, type for this, but for now we, let's just make a, use a tuple. Fill match arms. Left is W and S, I guess. And uh, the right one is key code up and key code down. <clears throat> yeah, like that. And the pedal. Yeah, let's just add a constant to it. Maybe like twice the speed of the ball or something. Whatever. Let's just use 150 or 200 for the speed of the paddle. At some point, I'm, I'm going to have to split up this uh, main.rs file and um, use smaller, um, smaller modules. But for now, we're just screwing around. Just don't don't take me as an example of how to properly uh, split modules <clears throat> so so the up key code and the down key 
keycode equals the player's movement keys. First, first we need to use the query for the paddle, which we don't care about because it's empty. For the player and the translation in mutable borrow of query.iter. So we get the movement keys of the player. But essentially, we, we still in this case need to do an if. So that's not Oh, we need to do it differently. Let's let's just not uh, not think about the ifs for now and just do it. If or let's use a match statement. It match key call, uh, keyboard input dot. Oh, actually, it does work. Or it doesn't. If the keyboard input dot just dot pressed of the up key code then we need to move the paddle. The translation dot zero plus equals minus one times actually we need a vector back to new. I accidentally turned on the numpad on my keyboard. Um, vec2 new and we're not moving in the x, x uh, in the x direction we are just moving in the y direction and in this case it's positive but the positive value is the pedal speed just pedal speed dot extend to make it three dimensional. And the translation needs to be mutable, I guess. <clears throat> so let's let's just do it quick and dirty. I mean in that case you could could just press both and this the speed wouldn't actually change. In this case, we need the negative pedal speed if we're going down. And now we just need to register the pedal movement system, which it already is, and it should work. And it does not. It does not. Why does it not work? Let's do some debugging. I mean, I could step through it using a debugger, but um, if you want to see something going on dynamically, it's it's best to just do it like this, I guess. Um, let's add 
debug derives to actually we don't need debug derives let's just print our up and down keyboard a uh, key code And I know what's going on. We made the same mistake as earlier. When spawning the paddle, you also need to spawn the player. Dot with player. And that's it. Now it should work. Oh my god. It's a bit fast. We forgot to use the, the time component. <laughs> That's quite quite funny. <laughs> so we have a keyboard input resource, but we also need a time resource. Like that. And now, time delta equals time dot delta seconds. And we could, uh, we can just multiply this vector with the time delta, and it should be okay. And it works. So I guess that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And yeah, see you next time.